we have been seeing a new advancement in the healthcare IT space just after COVID. A lot of things in and around IT uh, has been changing and a lot of people are becoming tech friendly who never used to uh, like access any device or any computer or any application. But now times are changing, things have been changing and the credit goes to the CIOs, the IT managers, the IT team, which is behind all these activities. The healthcare IT space now it's brimming with new advancements as in IT like information and technology has revolutionized the patient care and healthcare services across the world, not just in India. So as healthcare IT provides so many things like sharing of patient information for healthcare providers to better patient care, then there is telemedicine. So there are a lot of offerings under one umbrella. And we at MediCircle are conducting the leading healthcare CIOs and IT manager series, showcasing the movers and shakers. And most importantly, the behind the curtain people, that is the IT team. Because if today we are talking about healthcare disruptions and we are talking about healthcare advancements, digitalization in healthcare, a lot of credit goes to the IT team behind any such organization. Hello, I'm Smita Kumar. And today our guest for the talk is Padan Priya Srila. Padan Priya is mm -hmm. currently the uh, chief strategist at Cranium Health. It's a healthcare IT company pioneering healthcare IT solutions and innovations. Cranium Health provides next generation enterprise and business solutions. It, it's like a healthcare information platform, especially uh, specialty hospital solutions and also AI and business intelligence. That's BI solutions for hospitals, which is very much important today because hospitals need to depend on such BI analytics to give better patient care and also to enhance their overall productivity and profitability. So we have been seeing so many IT solutions being used and not just from uh, super specialty hospitals to tertiary care, care hospitals. She has also been uh, leading the IT operations of major uh, uh, hospitals like uh, Madras Medical Mission, Global Hospitals, Sri Ramchandra Medical University and Ganga Hospital. She has a 24 plus years of uh, post qualification experience in which 18 plus years of experience is as senior management person. So hi and welcome to MediCircle, uh, Padma Priya Sriram. Hi, thank you Smita for the invite. So uh, how does it feel? Because first time, it's especially IT people are coming <laughs> on the camera and discussing what beautiful disruptions they have brought into the healthcare ecosystem. New disruptions, I could say, like uh, the you know, like uh, the newer technologies that were introduced, um, especially uh, during the pandemic time, and uh, you know that's being currently used. Uh, the the um, solution that uh, uh, occupies the center stage is uh, remote consultation, remote patient care. Uh, remote patient care start getting. Uh, lot of uh, importance because um, you know like when we admit a patient in a covid care ward uh, the patient attenders will not be uh, you know allowed to go and see the patients yes so the patient attendance will be very much uh, um, afraid scared at what is happening to their um, near and dear so we, you know, like we have to enable a video uh, streaming of live video of the patient from the ward to the patient attendants, from wherever they are. They can be in the hospital. They can even be in some some other part of the world. So this kind of solution, streaming of video, video consultations, remote patient care tools, um, these uh, tech, uh, you know, these tools became very popular during the pandemic time, and now it is being you know, like made very popular and be used very, um, you know, regularly by everyone. True. Uh, so what are the major challenges you faced as an IT manager in your 24 plus years of experience? I would not say it is a challenge because, you know, like when I started my career uh, uh, as a postgraduate in computer science way back in the 1990s, um, I, you know, the IT um, uh, industry was very green, but I switched my career from IT industry to the healthcare just to understand what's happening. You know, like I was thinking that that's, that is going to be a, 
big scope and i should be a role in the uh, in the in the for the future so um i switched my career from the it industry to the healthcare and hospital automation and i you know my career started with madras medical mission it was a beautiful environment i was given with where you know like we were already having a lot of uh, software implemented and um, the the focus was very much given for the uh, statistics patient statistics so we were i was given more orientation towards how to uh, you know what is the importance of a statistics what is a footfall what is a patient um, you know like uh, outpatient statistics and uh, you know like any anything else which is related to the hospital performance so those techniques were taught to me so it was a day to day learning for me uh, you know from uh, setting up the it infrastructure to uh, developing and deploying the uh, hospital automation software so um, challenges we have to uh, be ready to adopt to the changing technical environment that is the challenge it is a challenge for ever for anyone who is entering into the um uh, industry it is a challenge constant challenge we have to be ready for um adopting to the changing technical uh, you know like landscape Definitely. so from uh, it infrastructure to the hospital software you know like the role of a healthcare cio or a hospital it manager is um, yes as you rightly said we are the behind the screen people uh, it will not be very prominently uh, shown outside but if a computer is not uh, you know functioning at the front office for about half an hour then our presence will be felt okay if we are not giving a 24 bar 7 support uninterrupted um the primary functioning of the hospital uh, is will become a challenge so we are important and um, yes i i am i'm very um, what do you say um i'm very happy that i have been in this space and uh, as a service person ensuring 24 bar 7 service and uh, yeah it is it is a it is a very um, memorable and uh, good journey all throughout surely yeah the challenge is like we have to be always available for updating ourselves yes definitely so like covid is like a face on challenge for everyone but it is also a wake up call for so many of us who are there in the healthcare fraternity why because now we are trying to make healthcare more accessible especially to the healthcare professionals also to the patients family like spreading information and educating and empowering on the grassroots levels like there are certain dashboards for covid shared by various healthcare providers showing the bed and occupancy availability because we have seen that in the last second phase of uh, covid that we india has faced a lot of infra challenges in healthcare especially in terms of bed and oxygen availability so as an it professional what marks your contribution towards fighting the pandemic towards fighting the pandemic yeah um, see uh, as you rightly said you know like uh, we being in the it uh, we being in the hospital industry having technical knowledge um, you know like we we thought that you know we, it is our responsibility to reach out to the people you know like uh, large enterprise hospitals had the facility to establish uh, help desks for the patients and uh, you know like see anyone calling up the hospital asking whether the bed is available there should be a person to tell them instantaneously whether uh, it's available or not yes number 2 is that uh, a patient uh, you know like uh, see there was a qualifying criteria for uh, uh, a hospital to get the patient uh, uh, admitted um, based on the facilities that they had you know like some hospitals had icu beds some hospitals didn't have icu bed they had only oxygen bed level support so um, you know like the, the the availability of a help desk for a hospital was very very important during that time okay because everyone is in panic mode and they want to know what where to take their pay, uh, uh, you know near and dear and um, you know like as an it professional what i did like uh, i thought um, small hospitals which are having facility are not visible to the public okay so we a set of people formed a group and we established a helpline okay we established a helpline 
and we published our numbers in the social media and you know in a day we used to get 300 400 calls and we used to you know like either whether we are able to route them to the pay the appropriate hospital or counsel them you know many of them were in a panic mode they were not knowing what to do how to respond how to react whether they are in a critical condition or not whether they need to really go to the hospital or not so many things were there you know initial level of counseling was required Okay, because we were IT professionals and because we were having exposure to the healthcare and understanding the terms and you know, like how do we interact with the patients, everything was in the process of you know day-to-day -day life for us, you know, like you know, we were able to counsel the patients, direct them, you know, like and then uh, guide them to the appropriate hospital because. Um, you guide a patient who is uh, in need of an ICU bed to an oxygen bed hospital, they are losing time. The infection uh, was progressing very fast and uh, every minute counted. Yes. Okay, so um, organizing this care was very important. So we used a social media, WhatsApp, and whatever, you know, cloud telephony, so many different uh, tools that those are available right now. We, uh, in a group of people, it was a big, massive help desk that was functioning during the second wave. I hope it should not happen again. I, know I pray that it should not happen again. But um, yeah, we did, I know like we could say like we did a good job of, you know, like at least, you know, like if we are able to uh, make sure that at least we're 20 to 30 people are saved, you know, by, if you are able to hear that they are um, getting better and getting discharged and they are, you know, that was... The moment of uh, satisfaction for us Definitely. being in the healthcare space with IT as an IT person. Surely, because that satisfaction is very priceless while you are serving the mankind. So, Pantriya, tell yes. us like, how many, how have things changed? Like, right? because now everything has become is going physical. I mean, becoming digital from being physical earlier. Definitely due to, yeah. and now it has. Uh, given new new many new such responsibilities to people definitely from the IT team because digitalization is happening due to people like you and the different products and offerings which were available earlier also but have never been utilized or practiced so what would be your take on that yeah see digital health is becoming order of the day okay um, so, see, um, as a healthcare IT organization, as a chief strategist for a healthcare IT organization, I tell you this view, point of view. See, uh, if the uh, uh, hospital is a greenfield hospital, if it is a greenfield hospital, then the IT planning happens in the end. People are very much aware of what is required and uh, appropriate budget is given for IT and end-to-end uh, -end automation is happening now. Even Cranium Health, we have uh, done a couple of our um, uh, customers have gone end-to-end -end digital during this COVID time. Okay, we have helped them, yeah. So um, uh, it is happening if, uh, for a Greenfield hospital. If a hospital um, is using legacy systems, then, um, it is costly, you know, like the changing, making, bringing in complete end-to-end -end automation is costly, but it is doable. And many hospitals are making attempts to uh, make, uh, you know, end-to-end -end digital, uh, in their, you know, complete digital transformation in their hospitals. And, uh, you know, like uh, um, uh, bridging the desperate systems, like you have PACs, you have HAS. Okay. Some hospitals will be having a standalone pharmacy module. And uh, some hospitals will be having standalone insurance model. So bridging everything together, bringing in one snapshot view of, of a patient um, uh, is, is, becoming, is becoming order of the day. It is required, you know, uh, because doctors are expecting now, nowadays, doctors are expecting everything to be available in their desktop, you know, while they are consulting to the patient. And now tools are also available, you know, like, uh, um, mobile application development has become very, very affordable nowadays. Um, almost every uh, one has got mobile application support. EMR is in mobile now, you know, like if not complete a mobile application, at least a tab enabled uh, um, uh, EMR is available. And um, if uh, anything is given in a handheld device, there is an option. Uh, so um, even doctors don't uh, uh, say no for that. So they adopt. 
so the data capture is happening because just we have to uh, bring in a correct strategy for pushing uh, appropriate technology um, so that you know like see nowadays um, yeah, bridging different uh, systems is also possible okay yeah. and um, it is it has become very easy you know like with the help of apis and everything it is becoming very easy to uh, bridge bring the data between two different systems so give uh, a friendly uh, interface uh, to the existing legacy system it will be costly it will be definitely costly but bringing it is uh, doable and uh, bringing a complete digital uh, platform is doable it is happening india is uh, many hospitals are adopting even small hospitals i have seen i have supported they are um, you know like uh, very excellently uh, you know using the applications um, i have given support to one hospital which is in uh, multiple locations they have been using a cloud enabled uh, application cloud hosted uh, um, hospital information system with ease the doctors are using that to the current generation of uh, doctors they are using the application any um, device it device with ease and uh, they understand the value of uh, data and uh, they uh, pull the patient complete uh, uh, you know like a, a medical record and they you know they refer it and also they understand the importance of uh, um the machine learning artificial intelligence the need why the data has to be built um the awareness is spreading you know it is spreading and the adoption is happening there is definitely i have a hope that um in a span of 10 years you can see a complete digital uh, transformation in at least in all large enterprise hospitals it's doable it's becoming uh, definitely like data is like oil so and also it's very yes. very important because there is the more you delay the, the 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 technology is going to leap frog to blockchain metaverse it's going to go <laughs> so it's better that we adopt <laughs> the latest technology as quick as possible <laughs> but yes there were a yeah. lot of i mean resistances also uh, from uh, some the like healthcare fraternity the lot of people who were not very much comfortable with the it systems but finally they have also realized that it is going to save times and ultimately save lives uh, so pardon me just a quick question how has your journey been as an it person how satisfying it has been and what are the quick learnings you would like to share with our audience so that they shouldn't be making those mistakes and they should be learning from them and every one every person who were is working in his or her field and has got such kind of an experience he or she develops that expertise and it's it's a, it's yeah. completely a learning process it's a day on day to day process so please share your experience yeah see yeah see um, the journey is like every day learning you know like we have to be ready to adopt the latest technology and make use of the latest latest technology understand that information is wealth information is wealth we should know we should use the appropriate technology and appropriate tools to safeguard the information that we are managing all it managers are wealth managers okay <laughs> so they are, yeah they are managing the information of a hospital enterprise so they should give more importance for what are the uh, tools and techniques that has to be um in place in order to preserve the information that they are handling so what do i mean by that is is like see you have a local area network established you have internet connection given and you have a mobile application you don't have a firewall are you giving it a, a safe system to work okay so an it manager should think end to end you know like they should know how to protect the complete infrastructure end to end from gateway level to the user end point level they should know how to uh, establish security and with more people bringing their own devices to the hospital be it a laptop or a mobile we were you uh, know coming up with bring your own device policies okay and uh, yes bring your own device policies are there and now people are using your whatsapp anyone can take a photograph of a patient file easily and um, any information can be shared very quickly so what is the 
security that you are giving to the device, you know, security for the information, hospital information you are giving for the devices that are brought into the enterprise. That should be paid attention to. So a mobile device management um, applications should be in place. Bring your own device policy should be in place. Information security standards should be in place. These are all, these are all um, budget in intensive. We have to get the approval, but we have to, um, we have to spread the awareness that um, the information is very important. And um, any attack, you know, like see a user, it, you know, with ignorance, they go and click one uh, link and the ransomware attack, data is taken away. However, what is the, what is the um, protection mechanism you're keeping in place? So an IT manager or a CIO should think end to end. It is not only implementation of software. Implementation of software is one portion. To implement a software, you should know the hospital protocols well, operations well, and also you should know how the software is working, how do you implement it, how do you interact with the users, and how do you convince them and make it into use. So you have to be a technocrat, you have to be a good um, interpersonal, uh, you know, interactive person, um, and you have to be a good trainer in order to, uh, in order to achieve this uh, successful implementation, that is one portion. Another portion is using the gadgets, you know, like making sure the gadgets in the enterprise is safe, how uh, it is protected, how the information is protected, how the gadgets are protected. All those policies and protocols should be in place. So the role of an IT manager is end to end. They have to be both infrastructure person and a software person. That should be a mixture. Um, it can be a combination in the team, but the complete IT management becomes this. So, uh, so that's the learning I have got uh, in my 20 years of journey. So that's what I would like to recommend. <laughs> because it was great to know uh, Patna Priya and thank you so much for joining us today for the leading CIOs in healthcare. It was a pleasure talking yeah. to you. Thank you, Smita. Thank you so much.